Hi Grizzlies and welcome back to another episode of Grizzly True Crime. My name is Gizzle K and today we we're going to go over some of the questions that I know one of us still have in this case. Please put a one in the chat if you can hear me properly. I really hope so. Um, let me take this crawl line off. Thank you for being here. If you are brand new to the channel, my name is Gisela Kay. I am South African, living in the Netherlands, and I love talking about true crime. Thank you to all the OGs who are here. Welcome, mods. Welcome, everyone. Um, yeah, no? If you don't know, I'm a true crime author, right? Um, I wrote four true crime books on serial killers. And when I wrote those books, you know you've gone a little bit too far into the abyss as I call it, when you start dreaming about the cases. And I'm finding that in this Kylie Rodney case, man, ooh, I'm, I'm starting to dream about it and think about it and like the whole time because it's just, it's gotten a little bit crazy, right, on social media. <laughs> it's like, oh, my word. Um, and I know all of us want to know what happened to Kylie, what really happened, you know. And I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure that we will ever get the full autopsy on the toxicology report, but I'm sure they will let us know, of course, what her cause of death was, if it was an accident or not, all that kind of stuff. But I know that there's so many questions going round and round and round on social media. So I thought, you know what, let me put a presentation together and let's chat about it today. I uh, hope you guys are <laughs> excited for that because I see, you know, when, I, oh, South African, whoop, whoop, yes. I see that, you know, when I'm watching content all over the place, I'm like, whoa, it's, it's very similar questions that come up. And of course, I get lots of emails as well with similar questions. Sorry, I just see my light flickering around here. I just want to change it a little bit. Too yellow, too yellow. Mm. Sorry. Green screen problems. Hold on one second. That's a little better, right? Okay. Whew, yeah, justice would be sweet. Answers would be sweet if it's just a tragedy, you know, which either way, it's very, very sad, right? <laughs> Beck says, uh, it's turned into a circus. Yep. We saw it happen, of course, in other cases as well, like Summer Wells, Dylan Rounds, and all of that. And man, it is, it's actually really sad to see, but I do understand that no matter what anyone's doing or what they're talking about, the reason, the intention, I believe, I mean, I hope I'm not wrong, but the intention seems to be to, we all just want answers. We want to know what happened to Kylie. I feel very protective, right? That's why we ask questions like in the beginning of the case and like, why does this person say that? Or why does this happen? Or, you know, the red flags and all that kind of stuff. It's, I, I don't know, we feel protective. Kylie was 16 years old, almost 17. And it's just very sad to think about. Okay, so just hold on one second, please. I just want to <laughs> quickly put it on just a slightly slower mode, okay, before we dive into it. And for those of you, put a one in the chat if you have seen Kylie Rodney's mom's statement at the celebration of life. And put a two in the chat if you have not yet seen it. I'm going to play it at the end, okay? <laughs> Katie says, I need answers. <laughs> Right? Okay, so let's do it like this. Okay, so one, if you have seen Kylie Rodney's mom, put a one in the chat if you've seen that clip, and two, if you haven't seen it. All right. Some haven't seen it. We are going to play it at the end, uh, just so that you can see, you know, that statement from the Celebration of Life. Of course, Kylie Rodney's Celebration of Life event was this week, this past Saturday. Um, there was actually another event as well, which was a day of remembrance that David Robinson had. If you haven't heard of the Daniel Robinson case, uh, please check out that playlist. And you can also check out his channel. Please help find Daniel. That would be helpful, Shivani. It will be helpful to learn cause of death and toxicology results. I agree. Hey, South African expats worldwide. Very nice. Okay. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's put up my... <laughs> presentation shall we and I just couldn't want to check one thing okay we're good all right so what happened to Kylie I think <laughs> if we were to summarize everybody's questions worldwide right now that's covering this case involved you know as in talking about the case whether you're in the chat, whether you're a content creator whether you ever met Kylie or not most of us all of us we want to know what happened to Kylie? Right? Okay. And that's the, no, imagine if it, that's the only question. Okay. So 
<laughs> carrying on. Also, that's a picture of Nick Rin, who I had on the show on, was it Friday, I think it was, which was such an honor to have him on uh, from Adventures with Purpose. He was the diver that actually went to inspect Kylie's vehicle and took the footage that we see on their video. And before I dive into this, Adventures with Purpose has today released a members-only video uh, on the case of Jolissa Fuentes. So if you are a member over there, remember to check out that episode. Of course, again, within a few days, it'll be available publicly for everyone to watch. Um, that's not, it wasn't something new, like in this case, like why would they put it in members only? They do it all the time. It's, they, they think they're members because guess what? Members support the work that they do, right? By watching their videos, subscribing, liking, like here, viewers, you're supporting the channel. But if there's members, like if you see anyone's name highlighted here in the chat, they are members. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. And they've released that video there first. So I'm only about halfway through. I still got to watch it, which I'll probably do right after this, honestly. All right. If I miss any of your questions, I'm so sorry. Um, of course, there's a lot of people here. I'm going to quickly show you my presentation and just discuss some of the points, you know, that the this little presentation raises. I'm going to be looking at the chat and see what you guys say about it. So we are having a discussion together, but just know if there's like over a thousand people here, it's very hard to keep up with everything as much as I I appreciate you so much. Say what you want to say. Keep the chat grizzly, as we say, which means be kind to you, to others in the chat. Don't fight with each other. And uh, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, so what happened to Kylie? I know we all want to know. So I say here, question one. Now, the reason I put Adventures with Purpose, a screenshot there, how we found Kylie Rodney, murder or accident, is because they themselves said that they wouldn't have put that in the title if they thought, well, from everything they saw, this was just a tragic accident. They would never imply murder. They didn't even say foul play or accident. They said murder or accident. So, you know, for me, when I've said red flag or foul play, my mind has never jumped to murder. It's jumped to like, oh, my word, this could have been an overdose situation or something like that or a fight gone wrong or, you know, her being hit by a car by mistake or something like that. But they literally put in the title, how we found Kylie Rodney murder or accident. Okay, so now that's the question. What happened to Kylie Rodney? So if we look at the options, and of course, there are actually many options that we could explore. But the first option would be a car crash or a tragedy. When people say just a tragedy, that's not to at all water down the situation. It's incredibly sad that a 16-year-old ended up in her car in the cargo area underwater and we are yet to find out how she actually died drowning in that scenario being a logical explanation however we are yet to see what really happened okay so the first option would be question one what happened to kylie right a car crash or tragedy so like drunk or high driving uh, and no one else involved the second option we could really look at here is an accidental death or cover-up. By that, I mean maybe an overdose, a fight gone wrong, something else covered up. I don't want to put it here because you guys know I don't like being graphic or anything like that. Um, I like to do my level best to maintain and sustain the dignity of the victim. Um, even if they're a victim, you know, that's lost their life or, you know, by themselves, if it was a crash. But I don't want to, like... <laughs> go too far in speculating what else could be covered up. If I were to speculate one more, I'd say maybe it's like, you know, drugs and SA and then that's the cover up and all that. But anyway, and then even possible that something happened before the party, which would be between 6.08 p.m. and 10 p.m. or 10.30ish uh, when she supposedly arrived at the party. That's also possible, right? All but car crash and tragedy. I'm looking what you guys are saying. You guys say here, Sarah Moon says, all but car crash and tragedy. Nice picture. Yes. Okay. So then the third option is foul play. And I know that the second option is also actually kind of foul play, but I've seen a lot of things being said. Whoa, people, people really speculate the foul play far and wide. I mean, they're talking about satanic rituals and sacrifices and... Um, you know, mean girls and premeditated stuff and like, wow, you know, or someone snapping or someone super jealous or someone who couldn't let go. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. My goodness. 
folk idyllic uh, says, I feel the call I feel the call to Sammy at 1236 wasn't asking if she wanted a lift, but a call for help as the car was in the water. The thing is, though, that Sammy said she was talking and said she could hear a lot of people in the background. So I'm not sure about that. Thank you so much uh, for supporting the channel. <laughs> Don Hagerman says, foul play, too many red flags. Okay. Now, let's continue on. Remember, I'm what I'm covering today, um, I don't have the answers. None of us actually do. <laughs> In case you didn't know, none of us actually have the answers. And so we're looking at what are the top questions that we still have that's just going round and round and round, right? Okay. Some of these will be obvious to you. Like, obviously, we ask that, but we're just summarizing what are our top questions. And I've only chosen, I think there's 11 questions in my presentation. And I could honestly have sat here. This took me all day to put together for you guys. But I could literally sit here all week and probably come up with 99 more questions, right? <laughs> Ooh, Patty and Pink says, I dare them to say accident. I'm very worried that they're going to say that. But let's see. Okay, question two. Why is Kylie's date of death not known or listed? So you can see on the Celebration of Life poster, they said September 1st, 2005. And remember, there was a typo out there in, initially where we all thought she was born in 2006 and then realized, wait a minute, that would mean she just turned, she would have turned 16, which means she's 15. But no, no, no. The family is confirmed September 1st, 2005. It's on all their official um, flyers and on the page and everything. Okay, so if you dig a little deeper, September 1st, 2005, and then it says 2 August, 2022. Janie's child, thank you so much for becoming a member. Uh, if anyone else, if you guys uh, become members today, please check out the community tab because there's links there for you. Don't share it anywhere. Uh, for There's videos there for you. All right. So the full autopsy and toxicology report is still being conducted. Sometimes they list the day that the person is found as the date of death. Can you imagine the public speculation if they did that? I mean at this point because everyone's sort of like we've all drifted a little bit far into that abyss where now anything's possible, right? So if we were to see September 1st, 2005, until the uh, 21st of August, 2022, <laughs> wow, that could go wild on social media. So they're just leaving it like that. I'm not, I'm not saying that that is why they're doing it, but there is no specified date there. And why? Because the full autopsy and toxicology report is still being conducted. So remember that findagrave.com, because I know there's people in here. I'm one of them that goes to findagrave.com. But then people say, but there it says, 6th of August, right, 2022. The thing is that it's obviously a public site and it can be edited by site members, kind of like Wikipedia. And for example, we would never have known Gabby Petito's actual date of death unless her parents listed it in their current lawsuits. The funeral home showed her date of death as September 19th, 2021, which was the day that she was found. As you can see there, it says date of death, September 19th, 2021 even though her parents have said in the lawsuits August 27th. Is there anyone in here? Put a two in the chat if you don't know anything about the Gabby Petito case, because I will be amazed. If you missed that case entirely, wow, right? If they say accident, maybe AWP will release the other footage they have. That's what Crystal says. Thanks, Crystal, for your message there. Uh, they actually said if things develop a certain way, then they will release it so i'm not sure i feel like if they if they say nope this was just an accident nothing more no arrest will be made or anything like that i think they might not release it which is also what nick uh rin said when he was on my show last week friday right they won't be telling the autopsy until the case is solved i saw they said that uh the Freedom of Information Act and all that is expected or anticipated to be ready around the 1st of November, and they're not releasing anything until then. Saw that as well. So that's still a while, right? <laughs> April says two. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, no one's putting a two in the chat. Don't feel shy. If you didn't know about the Gabby Petito case, that's okay. I'll just be amazed. Like, wow, brand new in the house. Welcome, yes, to all the new Grizzlies. It's so nice to have a growing community. We love having you all here. And I hope you enjoy uh, this case coverage and future case cases that I will also be covering. Undecided. Okay, so question three. 
And this is in no particular order, by the way. I'm just putting in questions that I'm like, wait, let's try to summarize our top questions. If I were to think of all the emails and messages I get all the time, all day, every day, <laughs> on every platform, I try to put that all together and summarize at least 11 top questions, right? So question three, why is there no or so little concrete evidence of the party? Oh, my word. So the pictures on the left here uh, were taken by the PI when he was out there. Let's not discuss that for now. I know there's a lot of drama that's unfolded online, but there's some pictures of just, you know, a dollar note on the floor and that looks like some kind of a mushroom, but it could just really be a, a, like, you know, nature. And then this picture, man, this picture just bothers me. You just don't really see cell phones. Uh, Sammy Smith uh, was talking about the Be Real app. And now that one is possible. If everybody only used the Be Real app, I'd be like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's why, because you know, then it disappears after a certain time. But to think that these kids like were using, I mean, hello, it's 2022. And we were all in a lockdown situation. Don't say the word, okay? YouTube doesn't like that word. It's a blocked word anyway. The Rona, we call it. Oh, my word. So I think that also adds to, if you consider the, the Rona, time and everyone being on lockdown and not partying as hard right worldwide because i see it even here in the netherlands people party harder than ever now because it's almost like overcompensating right so i wonder if this party was so big because maybe that was a factor that people really just like oh yeah let's party you know like finally so i'm not sure but this photo man it just bugs the hell out of me it just looks like a photo from the freaking early 2000s or the 90s and there's some speculation around this i've had some emails around it i've got uh, so many people trying to help me look into this to prove that this photo is not a recent photo but anyway that aside there was this photo then there's other photos that popped up those were debunked then new things popped up videos that was debunked then some of the friends that were at the party apparently they've now been talking to chronicles of olivia i believe the channel is Oh, my word. And it's just like amazing. Even if you think of that, we can't even like on one hand how much was released, like photos, evidence of this party, right? It does look staged as well. <laughs> Gina says it looks staged. I mean, yes. And it also doesn't look like two to three hundred people. And then I must say in some of the interviews, you know, that I've re rewatched and things um, of the friends talking and all, it does sound like and with AWP saying there were multiple parties like Donner, at Donner Lake, at Prosser, at Boca, even in Reno, okay? There were parties happening all at the same time. So I'm wondering, I'm like, whoa, if it's like, let's say four different locations, was each location maybe 100 people or what? You know what I mean? <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> P. Jones. This case is making me snarky. <laughs> I've been very well behaved though, hey, not snarking too much. Don't you guys agree? There's been so much drama in this case and so much to snark about, so much to, to tackle, but no, 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 let's not go there. We can get snarky, but you know what I mean. It's just a, let's try to keep laser beam focused on what's important, right? I agree. Ruby blue, I agree that this looks like an old picture. I wouldn't be surprised if someone took a photo of some old you know, yearbook somewhere and just made it digital because that's possible too. And it's like, look, look what I provided. <laughs> How do we even know it's from the same country? So it's, it's the woods. Sure. And look at all the, the glass there. I'm just saying, you just don't know. Although does everyone's analyzed the shirts by now, right? Does someone say trucky? Because that could be a thing. There would have been photos and footage while the party was taking place. It does not make sense. Thank you, London girl. It just, to me, 2022, I mean, even for me, Thinking of, okay, put it, put it this way. My husband, Mr. Grizzly, is a software engineer. And he's extremely careful about social media because he's like, whoa. He's like, you know, on the side of things of like, you do know the internet's forever, right? <laughs> like, careful what you put out there type thing. Right? So he's more on the conservative side of things because he's a software engineer and he knows how things can leave this digital trail everywhere, right? Now, can you imagine... Three to or two to three hundred or four hundred people, whatever. They sometimes change it. Sometimes they say a hundred, then they say two to three hundred, which I know is what law enforcement said. And sometimes they're like three to four hundred people, and not one of these teenagers. I mean, since I was eighteen and now, okay, I'm thirty-eight, right? <laughs> I think I got my first phone when I was like eighteen or nineteen. My phone has never 
which is not a good, so I'm not bragging about this. I'm just saying it never leaves my side. It's always with me. I'm always taking freaking photos. If you are a member or you are on Patreon, especially, you know, I share a lot of content. We had a four hour live stream on Saturday. We went everywhere. Okay. So I just, I'm just saying, I, I tend to not be able to like not have my phone. And you're telling me these teenagers out there having the party of their life after all the Rona times, you know, are like, woohoo, let's go, let's party. We're about to go off to college. And there's no footage, right? Like, what in the hell? <laughs> We're not going over it. Don't worry, we'll slay her. <laughs> We're not going over the photo. We're just looking at it like, where's the evidence of this party? Oh, my word. It's so frustrating because as much as one can dig and one would think now, you know, I don't consider myself a sleuth. I'm I'm a YouTuber. I'm 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 the messenger. You know, as I say, I'm not a detective. I'm not an armchair detective. I'm not you know all these titles that some people either like to have or accuse one of having. No, 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 no. I'm a YouTuber. I love talking about true crime. And uh, wow, you would think that sleuths that are like going like deep, deep, deep to the dark web to dig out stuff. Like, still, it's so hard to actually find evidence of this party, right? Yeah, 90s grunge party. <laughs> okay, question four. How is it possible that Kylie ended up in the cargo area of the vehicle by herself? Do you know how much content is being made about this? Oh my word, and I see both sides. As in, there's people that are proving how very possible it is, and there's people that are proving how very difficult it is. This is one of the primary reasons that Adventures of the Purpose believes the way that Kylie was found was suspicious is because she was found not just in the back seat, but way, way back. They have never been able to answer whether Kylie was clothed or not and whether she was wearing shoes or not. If you look at all the interviews, they just that is a very difficult question, right? Uh, instead of saying, I don't know, or, you know, Nick Wren was saying he only really saw her legs. I don't know if you watched that interview. Um, he confirmed... The position she was in did you see that that was on duty run um he was on my show and then he hopped on there right after and there he said when he went by the window all he really saw when he said he could see two pairs of shoes he said he only saw her legs and it's basically like she was sitting as if like her 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 oh man i hate graphic details but she was the top part of her was on top like as if she was floating and like sitting the, her limbs were hanging down right so I was like, whoa, that's the first time anyone said her actual position because everyone thought she was like horizontal and all this kind of stuff, but way, way back in an upside down vehicle in that position, which um, a medical examiner explained would make sense based on how decomposition works, right? But still, damn, I was like, whoa, I can't believe he, he actually confirmed that little detail, right? And that's what you're saying, uh, Morgan Le Fay. You say bare legs, dot, dot, dot. Possibly because he looked and he said when he could see some skin. So we don't know. He couldn't see the top. He said it was very dark. But man, I got a fright when I heard that. I was like, what? So he said the water temperature, this is just random detail. The water temperature was approximately 73 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 degrees Celsius. And it was 13 to 14 feet deep. Okay. So this is not her vehicle uh, pictured here upside down. It's just a vehicle it's a 2013 honda crv that i found a picture of and i obviously turned it upside down so we could really see the, the thing that i struggle with is if she was in the front like in the driver's seat or the passenger seat or the back seat <laughs> i mean we'd have to assume let's say in the driver's seat driving into the water herself if we look at that possibility and wow the passenger window is all the way down and the rear driver's side is like halfway down and the water's gushing in. It's very disorientating, of course. It's dark um, and all of that. And the vehicle is turning over and all that. I understand. But man, if, if one were to drown anywhere other than the cargo area, how the hell are you going to basically synchronize float <laughs> through those areas. I know it's relatively big, but it's also relatively small. You know what I mean? Like if your arms and legs are kind of spread out, I'm trying not to be, I'm so sorry, trigger warning. I'm trying not to be graphic. I'm just saying to really float on your own through there, it just seems so unlikely, which is why I guess Adventures of the Purpose is like, that's suspicious. 
What do you guys think? Ooh, this is a problem. Aloha, Polly. Hello. Um, they would rather not be embarrassed than fight for the truth. Ooh, that is a concern, right? Jody, you say, was the passenger window broken? Um, I hope you watched the interview that I had with Nick Wren from Adventures with Purpose last week, Friday, because I asked exactly that. In the water, he said the passenger window is broken out. Later, he said wound down, as in all the way down. Um, and they, he couldn't see any glass. So he said that he assumes it was then all the way down. Yes. <laughs> Summer Wednesday. This party screams red flag to me. No photos, no videos. The pics we have look extremely edited or ancient. I know, right? Okay. And no, ooh, that one as well. Ooh, my goodness, don't get me started on that. No airbags? Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. I must have slowed a bit more, Moz. Can you let me know? Are we good? Or should I slow it a bit more? I'll make it 100 seconds. How about that? Sorry about that, everyone. Okay. I honestly do not think there were more than 100 kids there. How could they all be so silent? It seems crazy. I agree. I mean, for me, I'm even like, what if there were only like 20 kids there, you know? <laughs> Speculatively, I'm just saying. I don't know, man. Okay, let's put it back like this. We can address some drama type related content later, okay, in the waffle time. Waffle time, if you're brand new to this channel, we do map time. We're right now doing presentation time, okay? We're not doing map time, we're doing presentation time. And at the end, normally, because I don't like to say goodbye to you guys, <laughs> we do waffle time, okay? So we'll do waffle time and then I'll play the clip from the celebration of life. So hang in there for that if that's what you want to talk about, okay? All right. I need to know if the back seats were down, that would make a huge difference. The thing is, tattoos and true crimes, when we watch the footage, right, from AWP, doesn't it look like the seats are not all the way down? Because you can kind of see them, right, when he's, like, looking through the window. I feel like, I'm not sure, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it, it seems like they might not have, the back seats might not have been down, because I know that makes a huge difference to the space, right? All right. Now, question five. <laughs> Isn't it very suspicious that the passenger window was down, the rear driver's side window was halfway down, and there's a strap hanging out the back? Okay. If you like the way that I'm presenting true crime, by the way, please hit the thumbs up. Share this video quickly there on social media. Put it out on Twitter uh, or wherever you can, Reddit, Twitter, WhatsApp, Facebook, wherever you can. That would be very helpful. Thank you for being here. And if you're not yet subscribed, please do subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I'm next uploading. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Are we all ready? Now, the strap could be what they call a lift gate strap, which is an accessory that helps pull the hatch down. Now, Kylie was not a short girl by any means. I think she was five foot seven, right? But these vehicles do sometimes either come with it or they add it. Um, you know, one of those, I've actually seen one of those where you... It just makes it much easier to pull that hatch down. So I think that that I turned this picture, by the way, this picture, wait, where am I pointing? <laughs> this picture down here is of one of those uh, lift gate straps. And I've turned the picture upside down just to make sure on which side it would be then if the vehicle was upside down. So it seems to be plausible that it could be one of those. I've also seen someone, thank you to Fred, I believe your name is, for sending me a video um, to look at of your, it was a 2014, I think, Honda CRV showing that the seat belts in a Honda CRV can't stretch as far back as some other SUVs and it wouldn't be able to hang out this way unless the seat belt was cut. That was what Fred was speculating. So I'm like, whoa. So to me, it makes sense actually, in, in like, you know, in hindsight, I suppose, because at first I'm like, oh my word, that's a seatbelt. <laughs> but like, it could be one of these lift gate straps, right? Uh, the windows could have been down before Kylie left the party. The car would sink in 20 to 30 seconds with the windows down. And it would be dark and disorientating, especially if drunk or high, right? We don't know about the where the strap was going. Hold on. Was the strap going across the body, holding the body down? That we don't know, but I would not assume so because Nick Rin confirmed on an interview that it was as if 
Kylie was sitting. It's almost like, you know what I mean? Like her legs, he saw her legs and her head and torso were above. So that to me wouldn't indicate strapped down, right? What do you guys think? Eddie Max says, or Eddie says, I think uh, law enforcement is busy getting subpoenas for all those cell phones. That would be amazing, right? Okay, so I personally find it very suspicious that she's all the way, way back in the cargo area. Um, I'm just presenting some of these questions that we'll have. I'm like, could it be that it isn't suspicious? It's just very hard to believe that it isn't. But I mean, imagine maybe it's a whole chain of events. It's just like, wow, imagine it. Sure. Did she know how to swim? I don't know. But I do believe her family said, I don't know. We don't know if she's, I mean, Sammy said she loves the water. So maybe. And she grew up in the area. So maybe, but I'm not sure. Regina says she could have been strapped, not floating, same position. Could be. Oh, my word. Exactly. X mind K. We're getting to it. We're getting to it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this is Mary Jane, uh, Valentine. I don't know. I can't figure it out. It disoriented me just thinking what's up and what's down. <laughs> right? But if you look at it for long enough, <laughs> which unfortunately I've done, and you try to simulate work. Okay, so the vehicle's upside down. So obviously the ceiling's on the floor and like, whoa, even to think of what, like floating downwards through those seats. It's just, it's very hard to believe, right? Very, very difficult. Let's see what 949 Sherry says. If it was an accident and the water pushed Kylie to the back of the car, then why didn't the water push your belongings to the back with her? Interesting. Flipped over and all that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Oh, my word. Thank you, Rob. Really? Did we reach that now? Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, my word. Thank you, Grizzlies. That's cool. Thanks, Rob. Okay. I will check my email. I just want to work through this presentation. All right. Question six, why is there so much speculation surrounding the teenagers who knew Kylie? Right? Just hold on one second. One second, please. Oh. <laughs> okay. So question six, why is there so much speculation surrounding the teenagers who knew Kylie? So the first one, they left her alone at a party when she was in no state to drive. She has been described as intoxicated, barely able to walk, very drunk, etc. And yet they, eight, age 18, adults ditched her a minor, which is not a display of their care for her well-being. Which is why we all feel protective and like, oh my word, and like, what is going on here? And we all look at them and, right, look at what they say and all of that, right? You agree? I mean, side story, quick one. I went to a Contiki tour, I don't know, like 10 years ago, whenever it was. It was longer than, probably 15 years ago. <laughs> and I, we were at this event, like a party with a bunch, I mean, it's a bunch of strangers. It's Contiki tour. I don't know any of these people. I knew them for like two nights, you know what I mean? The group that I was with. And the one night we were all at this party and um, I decided to leave early and I just like left and went back to the hotel. Do you know how, fr how angry my roommate was with me? She was so angry, like, you do not just leave. We tell each other where we are. You don't just go like that, especially if we're drinking. And I'm like, oh, my word, you know. I wasn't used to that level of care. <laughs> but I must say, a stranger cared so much about me and my well-being and was so worried. And I'm like, wow. And these are Kylie's friends who are saying, whoa, she definitely. Um, thank you, Leah. I'll read this now. <sighs> She definitely was just left there. Like, oh, she, she's too drunk to drive. She's just in no state. I mean, she might just sleep over there. Who knows what she does? And then we're just going to go like, oh, man, that's why we all, you know, why is there so much speculation? Well, that's primary reason number one, right? Leah, Matthew, thank you, Matthews. Thank you for that. And you say, everyone be respectful, like Miss G says. Yes, please. Please be respectful. 
I don't know who's not being respectful, but mods. We got the best mods in the house. All the mods are the best mods. <laughs> That's Anna. We've got the best one. All of you are the best mods. Thank you, mods, for being here. If you see them with the wrench, they are the mod squad. You can use your best mods emoji um, to show your appreciation if you guys want. All right. So they claim to be the last people to see her and to have had contact with her. And this would be, of course, Sammy, as well as Elsa. Elsa says she saw 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 Kylie at 12.30. So I'm like, whoa. Like Sammy said 12.25, and Elsa had said, I've covered this in a previous episode, 12.30. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Damn, these friends were literally like, wow. It's saw the 12.25, 12.30, and at 12.33, her phone goes off. Amazing, right? Now, again, I'm not trying to point red flags at them. I'm saying, why is there so much speculation? It would be very, very unnatural to not be concerned by just looking at all of this. Am I right? <laughs> then they tried to debunk AWP's claims that they found Kylie. They were freaking out. And by that, I mean, of course, Jagger and Sammy were like, no, 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 don't believe them. They're just putting it out there. We don't know this yet. Of course, it could just be like freaking out because like, no, 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 what, 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 what? You know, could just be like normal teenager response. I don't know. But you know, on like the official pages and then on their pages to say it's not true and it's not her that they found it was just a little bit strange. Then two to 300 teens and young adults that apparently attended the party and some adults, right, have been encouraged not to talk to the police. Remember that whole thing of like, ooh, some, apparently some people are being encouraged not to talk. Now, if this is just a party and Kylie drove into the water by herself, why are they encouraged not to talk? That's so weird. That would be so weird maybe it really is i'll speculate that way let's go the way of well there's nothing suspicious about that okay well then maybe it's just don't talk about it or anything you did at the party because you're about to go off to college okay you've got a bright future ahead of you don't talk about that party maybe maybe right i would never um athalia says i would never leave a drunk friend alone at a party who has a car male or female right Wow, Jacqueline X, I see your comment and whoa. Oh, Sarah Jean, I see you. <laughs> Remember Sammy said she assumed Kylie was going to sleep it off in her car. Maybe that statement was just in case the car was found and where she would be located in the car. Who knows, right? My word. Thank you, Wicked World. I got your email. It's in my video. Um... I know you talk about the drone footage, which is interesting. I'll have to look at that later. I don't want to, you know, I don't speculate too far and wide. I'm not too sure what's going on there. <laughs> um, let me just quickly see this quickly. 2.30, go to time mark 2.30 and 5.54. Okay. So can you send me the link of which video? Because I've got lots of videos, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So... We go on. Now, the ex-boyfriend has been nostalgic since Kylie went missing, including showy, showing the media around Reno, where he and Kylie had some special time. It's obvious that he loves her and he's still in love with her despite their breakup and her moving on, but trying to filter tips for the police, saying, you clowns will see how innocent I am, and conclusive statements such as she was drunk driving down a steep slope, just let her rest, and that he will not be responding to DMs until the autopsy is made public is a little bit concerning to onlookers, right? <laughs> it would be, be, I'd have to be like literally blind to not be concerned about some of these things. And I feel like a lot of us on that page of like, literally we'd have to be like, don't worry, just ignore that completely. That's not weird at all. It's not weird at all, right? Okay. So. Psych sound off, aka coat. Grizzly Trukheim, I heard the father of a friend works for law enforcement. You know what? I got a list of, uh, I got emails with lists of friends with parents who work in law enforcement, which that would be very interesting. So it's not just the sheriffs of Placer County's son who may have speculatively been at the party. I have no idea, no proof of that whatsoever. <laughs> but now I've got a list and people are like, look into this. But I'm like, I don't know how to, like literally, I don't know how to prove any of that. Very interesting though. Very interesting, if true. Mm -hmm. 
And that's the thing, right? Leray says, right? I mean, the whole true crime community is up in arms because there's something off. You cannot dismiss that. I also don't know why people are like, don't talk about this or don't say that or whatever. Because like, uh, yeah, this is literally facilitating a conversation. Like this is a true crime channel on YouTube by not law enforcement, not a detective. <laughs> this is not CSI. This is nothing. Like I'm literally just a person who likes true crime and we... I'm facilitating the conversation with you. And it's a bit weird when people are like, shut up, stop saying anything about it. Like, I don't know. Are we supposed to be blind? We don't want... So I, I'm cautious with it. We don't want to, them to be doxxed, harassed, attacked. No, 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 no. We discuss over here. Isn't that a little bit odd? That's as far as I take it. Isn't it a little bit odd, right? It's a bit of a red flag. Don't know for what. That's the point. You know what's amazing is that people, if you show a red flag, they think, oh my word, you're calling them murderers. Like, not once. I'm just saying it's a red flag. Let's just pin that in our minds for later because it's a little bit odd. <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you, Ashley T. <laughs> that picture is so cute. <laughs> Love this channel. <laughs> All right. So here we go. So we looked at this. I mean, the... Um, Jules, wait, Jules of All Trades. There's a channel called Jules of All Trades that's also covering the case. And she's got a very interesting theory about Reno, about the party possibly actually having taken place in Reno. And I saw another channel, I don't know where I saw this, saying, well, maybe the party actually took place at Donner Lake and is in the main party. You know what I mean? Which would be so interesting as well. But anyway, they, I don't want to go off too much. I'm telling you, I could <laughs> just, if you guys think like, wow, this lady is so, I don't know what, to like conservative, not speculating too far. Oh, you should hear the conversations I have with Mr. Grizzly. <laughs> oh, I can go far. I just think it's not very responsible for me to do here. Let's just look at the facts, look at it gently, see what we can uh, try to understand from all this, right? But I know that a lot of us, we're thinking the same thing. Just know. If you're emailing me and like, hello, have you considered this? Of course I have. Of course. <laughs> Whatever you're thinking, I'm probably thinking too. Probably. Sometimes I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> but maybe. Okay. Now, question number seven. How did law enforcement miss Kylie's car? Is it possible that it was placed there later? Now, that is a speculative question. Speculation warning. I don't know what to think. I'm not sure. You can make up your own mind. That's the beauty of being on YouTube, being part of the audience. Make up your own mind. What do you think? What I put here is, of course, the 19,951 hours that law enforcement spent looking for Kylie. And to think that her car was right there where her phone last pinged is like, wow, that's just amazing. And the water isn't like chocolate milk, as Doug would say some water is. It wasn't like dark, dark water. Uh, I showed you guys some water if you are on Patreon or members on our four-hour stream on Saturday. Remember that water? That was like dark water. <laughs> this water was very clear. It actually looks wonderful. I'd actually love to swim in, you know, some of these lakes around the area there. It looks really nice. Um, clear water, relatively clear water. And like, wow, they missed the car. And yes, the water level seems to be dropping. Uh, but to think that this civilian went out there and put his phone in the water and can show us stuff on the floor. <laughs> and they missed a car i'm sorry i'm not trying to throw shade really at law enforcement but i'm like how <laughs> like how did you miss a car a whole car oh my word so doug bishop said that he believes the car was in the water the whole time and that uh, law enforcement divers aren't experts at using sonar that i can agree with okay and he said there is no national um standard there's no official training they've just practiced a lot and when they first started they thought everything was a car they've they like going with their boat with the sonar over a tree stump and they're like, it's a car. Or they're like going over some debris, it's a car. And then eventually they learn, you know, lots. They refine their skills and now they really know like, oh damn, this really looks like a car. And even in this case, when they went over Kylie's car, they were like, it could be a boat. Maybe it's not a car. Is it really a car? And then they spot that wheel. Remember that? So even with all the experience, initially they're like, maybe it's a boat. And when they went down there, whoo, and they're like, oh my word. It's actually a car and it's actually Kylie's car. That was so shocking. So Nick was saying like that was one of the reasons his face also looked like that when he came up uh, as we saw in the video because he was like, 
holy moly, I can't believe it. I can't believe we actually found Kylie's car. He was in total shock about that as well, right? Well, that's true as well. David Bebb says law enforcement confined their search to the boat ramp area, mostly. But there are pictures of them relatively close as well with tanks and everything very close to the area where Kylie was found because they had told uh, people helping in the search, right? Like this is the area where her phone last pinged. So, you know, fly your drone over here or check over here or whatever. So they didn't know. They know where her phone generally last pinged. Okay. And I'm just like, wow, it's just, <laughs> it's just amazing. Oh, wait, I missed, a, I missed a comment here. <laughs> Thought criminal. Remember when the public information officer was so snarky about social media? She was really like, we saw a lot of like anger from her that day. And she's like, social media? Most of what you see on there is fake news. And we were like, whoa. <laughs> it was like, oh my word. But then, yeah, social media, adventures with purpose, <laughs> expert divers and YouTubers went out there and found Kylie. And that was not fake news at all. They like literally solved the case. Oh my goodness. Wow. I know there's someone going to put in my comments, stop saying wow. And to that person, you know what I say? Wow. <laughs> Some people get annoyed with my little, <laughs> my little speech patterns. Okay. So uh, Nick Rin said he believes it is possible that the car was there in the water for about a week based on the, like the silt or the residue on the car. It could have been a week or more, you know, it was, so Doug is like, no, it was in the whole time. But when Nick was on my show, he was like, well, it's crossed his mind as well that it might have actually been placed there later. And I'm like, how much later? And it was literally like, well, maybe it could have been in the water for about a week. Now, I'm not trying to fuel the speculation that's already out there, but I mean, this was the diver from Adventures with Purpose on the show. When we asked him, what do you think? I mean, to him in his mind, it's crossed his mind. They also have questions and we're all waiting for answers from law enforcement, right? <laughs> you guys love the wow? Wow. <laughs> you should see my held for review section in my comments section behind the scenes. <laughs> People get so snarky and then I'm just like, oh, they don't like it when I say wow. <gasps> wow. <laughs> okay, moving right along. Again, well done to Adventures with Purpose for coming in there and finding Kylie. Oh, my word. Question number eight. All right. Hold on one second. No, no. Okay. Sorry. I will, I will see comments like this. We're going to address at the end in the waffle time. Those waffles might be a little bit salty today. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Question eight. Why did law enforcement not allow AWP to retrieve the vehicle? And why did they flip it without a net and leave all evidence behind? I mean, that is so freaking reckless. Do you Could you care any less? You know, like, hello. I mean, after all this, I'm sorry to say it like this, but after all that embarrassment, <laughs> you're still going to embarrass yourselves even more. I'm just saying. It didn't even have to be that way. It could be like, well, we're not experts at this, man. 19,551 hours or whatever it was. We didn't find her. Okay. And just remember... For all those uh, very intelligent content creators out there that are like, why did you? Ha ha, you said she could have been abducted. Uh -huh. So did Sammy. Uh -huh. So did her mom. So did law enforcement. In the beginning, they were all speculating that Kylie could have been abducted. It was one of the main possibilities. In fact, there's a clip that I saw of Sammy, which I hadn't seen before. Whoa. Uh, I gotta find that news clip. I don't. I can't find it now. It was like it's like wow. My search history will be huge. What she said was, um, someone. I think it was. Wasn't it? No, no, no. It was like on a news channel or something. It wasn't the All American Dream Chaser one. But she was asked, "Do you think that Kylie could have just like driven into the water herself?" And she said, "No. She doesn't think that she would do that. Just drive into the water by herself." And I'm like, "Damn!" And she was like, "I fear someone took her." <gasps> so even all her, all her friends, you know were not thinking in the beginning that she would have just driven into the water, especially with how that road is. It's all like rocky and wobbly and just very hectic, right? 
<laughs> and it good for you Gizla. we love that about you <laughs> wash hands <laughs> Google the stickers. They are surf shop or skater decals. Oh, okay. Oh, my word. Okay, so you say Ruby Blue. I can't believe they flipped it, period. I want to use all caps, but I didn't. Yeah, please don't use all caps, guys. You know why? Because YouTube's artificial intelligence picks up on certain words. Like, if you said the full word for Rona, it's like, ooh, naughty, naughty stream. We're definitely going to suppress the reach of this because they're discussing naughty things over here. <laughs> this is not family friendly. And I'm like, oh, no, 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 don't do that. <laughs> So I have to play by the rules of the platform, right? So yeah, if you use all caps, it sees it as like, let's say if everyone in this chat started using all caps, it would see the stream and all this hard work as spam. And that's not right. We don't want that. And you know what else it does? If you use all caps on many channels, like all the time, it'll look at your channel as spam and then make you unsubscribe. It will automatically unsubscribe you from channels. We don't want that. Stay here. <laughs> okay. Now the flipping of the vehicle. It's so interesting how they're like, oh, they have to flip the vehicle. They were treating this vehicle in the water as if it was one. It's as if they watched an AWP episode, you know, where they're like, wow, this car has been in the water for 25 years. We better flip it because what we don't want is to compromise evidence and let that roof, the roof might collapse. But guys, the car was only <laughs> in the water for like two weeks. So this whole like, oh, the roof might collapse is not valid. Come on. They didn't have to flip it. Adventures of the Purpose said what they would have done is netted it or at least sealed the windows, right? Um, and there's actually really cool pictures that you can see if you look it up of like netted vehicles, submerged vehicles that are recovered and netted and then pulled out, right? Just in case stuff falls out, at least it falls into the net. Or they could have just sealed the windows, right? And they would have taken it out on its roof. But here's the thing. Here's one of my other questions. Never mind the bottom there. Where's Kylie's phone? <laughs> One of my other questions, because again, I've got notes everywhere, is, you know what's so weird to me is how they, <laughs> okay, sorry, it's, it might be a little snarky, prepare, <clears throat> how they literally are like, when AWP finds the vehicle, they're like, all right, boys, step aside, we got this, just step aside. No, we don't want you to recover this vehicle, even though it's the expertise as well. Doug's got a lot of experience doing that. They're like, no, 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 step aside, please. We've got this. Watch us flip this vehicle, break a window and the mirror, the side mirror. Ah, oh, thank you. And just tow this vehicle right out. <laughs> Watch us also leave all the evidence behind. Tell you that our FBI divers, divers will be going in. And they obviously didn't because there's all this stuff lying there. Now, it is so bizarre that here, yes, I put a former FBI's comment on. Why, why, why? It's so bizarre that you're like... The <laughs> The speculation that's out there now is that all of this was planted, right? Which I, I have to say, at some point crossed my mind because I'm like, it's too crazy that the stuff was just left behind like that. Let's consider the possibility that it's not the stuff. <laughs> but here, Jennifer Coffindoff says, I asked for clarity and it came. Investigation complete without equ uh, equ uh, that word's hard for me equivocation, there we go, the laptop or other items purported to be Kylie Rodney's are hers, not planted, but left behind by law enforcement. Shame on law enforcement for not properly handling the investigation. The window should have been sealed, divers, <laughs> right? But now here's the thing, AW, AWP finds the car. They're like, you know what? We're experts at this. We'll retrieve the vehicle. They're like, no, 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 step aside. Go stand over there on the other side. Don't even stand near us. Get away from here. But you know what? When Sammy wants to set up her own freaking microphone and say, all tips should come through me. I'm the person these teens should talk to. <laughs> there, they don't say a word. They're not like, step aside, Sammy Smith. Just get out of here. No, there they're like, oh, okay. Well, it was a public place. We couldn't really stop her, hey? Oh, my word. Like the contrast, you know, of just like, just let an 18-year-old just do all the talking and just say all the tips can come through me. You can come into this fan here with me. I know it sounds creepy, but I'm a normal person. Just come to me and tell me everything. <laughs> Parents, drop your kids off and drive away. Drive far away. Make sure you can't hear anything. Make sure you can't see anything. Oh, that's fine. But AWP, the experts at actually getting the vehicle out and maintaining, even they said they would have gone in and taken some of the evidence out and put that in a baggie right? <laughs> no, 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 there, there, they're like, no, 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 step aside, boys, we've got this. Oh, my word. So, anyway, uh, they, they, they flipped it, broke a window, broke the mirror, touched the steering wheel, 
oh, what a disaster. It just feels so careless and reckless. And I'm very, very worried about the, the forensic integrity of that vehicle at this point. Never mind Kylie in the car when they're flipping the vehicle. Like, oh, my word. Oh, I'm so worried about it. <laughs> anyway, and where is Kylie's phone? We don't know if they have found her phone or not. Speculatively, not. From what I've heard, maybe not. Right? What? Sorry, excuse me? What? Hold on one second, please. We're going to YouTube. <laughs> we are going to YouTube. Stand by, everybody. What are you talking about? We're going to this channel. Community tab. Nope. No, they didn't. Could somebody please help me verify this right here? Because they did. That's not some of the items that they listed. So what are you talking about? That's one of the items they did not find. And then you know what else? The next day, other divers, volunteer divers with tanks go in. <laughs> and uh, let me show you this. Without bringing up. Uh, this is going to bring up drama. Check a TV. What a relief. As of today, we will no longer be diving the area unless we are asked to do so by the family. So frustrating that it's taking this long to do another sweep, he says. Thank you to our subscribers who called law enforcement to recover the laptop and the PI. Okay. So, wow. Yeah, no, he didn't. <laughs> Kugi's like, what, 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 what? Me too. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. He did not find the phone. No one's found the phone yet. We don't know where the phone is. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Mrs. Kelly. Gizla, what are you looking for? Did someone just find a phone, you're saying? Someone in the chat said that Checker TV found a phone. But if he found a phone, he would have either been live streaming it by now or put it on his community tab or something. Yeah, they are saying, but they were already on. That was on Friday. They were on my channel, yes. Did G say, or does anyone know the company that law enforcement outsourced to retrieve the vehicle? Oh, I would love to know. Okay. Yeah, they have not found the phone. So to the person who put that in the chat, why? <laughs> why do you do such things if you don't know? <laughs> okay. Thank you for trying to share information, but it seems to be not real. Okay. So where is the phone? Oh, my word. But the thing is also, wow, this computer looks real clean when it's open like that, right? Duffel bag. We went over all the stuff that was found. Um, and the thing is, of course, with Apple products and all that, I mean, any smartphones, laptops, whatever today, there's the cloud. The FBI can get a lot of information from the cloud. Maybe that's why they're also like, whatever, we'll just leave. <laughs> it's not great. It's not great. But just like, we don't need that stuff. We've got everything we need. What do you think? <laughs> all right. So, oh boy. Question nine. After all that carelessness, AWP, step aside, we got this, flip the vehicle, leave all the evidence behind for civilians to find. <gasps> wow. Now, who is performing Kylie's autopsy? This makes me a little worried. Sorry, I don't mean to not have faith at all. I'm just like, oh boy. Based on that Project Veritas and all the stuff you guys have sent me, I'm like, oh no. Oh my. <laughs> if we look at the Sheriff Wayne Wu, oh boy. That's interesting. But he's Placer County Sheriff, right? But what's interesting is he's the sheriff coroner marshal. Wow, title sheriff. And then we've got Shannon Moon, who we saw at the press conference when we no longer saw Angela Musalem because she's from Placer County. A lot of people ask, where's Angela? But Angela was the public information officer, or is, uh, the public information officer for Placer County Sheriff's Department. And as soon as Kylie's vehicle was found in Prosser Lake, then that's Nevada County and Nevada County Sheriff's Department, right? Nevada County in California as well, because some people confuse it with like Nevada, right? So I'm like, who's the coroner there then in Nevada County? The Nevada County Sheriff's Department is the lead investigative agency, which they had to say again the other day. So I assume Sheriff Shannon Moon will be, because it says Sheriff Coroner Public Administrator, right? Yes, I hope a medical examiner and a pathologist, I hope they have contacts that are very very experienced right because they really need that especially after they flipped the vehicle the way they did right the county coroner i'd expect uh-huh yes oh wow 
<laughs> Gina, you see, I don't look at those numbers in the corner there. I don't look. Otherwise, I'll get real nervous. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Matt, I see where it's coming from now. Matt Stroker in chat has confirmed a bit of that, but it's not. That's We don't know what that is, right? <laughs> Katie Keithley getting snarky with me here. Oh, boy, these two cats. <laughs> this is this year. This is currently now. Like, literally, wait. Let's find it here. Okay. There you go. Nevada County, California. Sheriff Shannon Moon. Because I typed in coroner, like, look there. It says nevadacounty.ca.gov or slash ca.gov 2020 coroner. And there you go. Thank you to the mob crew. What's up, mob crew? <laughs> <laughs> Stefan, question number nine. I hope it's a forensic pathologist. Uh, that lady, Barbara Butcher, who often appears there on Duty Run, she has performed or been involved in 5,500 uh, death examinations. I'm like, damn, lady, saying my favorite numbers, but also 5,500. And she's like, I really hope they have someone very experienced there who can help them out. And I'm like, me too. <laughs> yes, the medical examiner does the autopsy and the toxicology report. She's the coroner. I really hope that they have some experienced contacts, right? Okay. So, we continue on. Damn, we've just gone over an hour. I thought this would be like, quick, quick. <laughs> yes, Barbara Butcher. Now, question 10. Was Kylie dating Nathaniel Kabakongan, the 20-year-old who was arrested and facing murder and felony drug charges? N O. No, she was not dating this one. Everyone's like, oh, my word, it's Nate. It's this Nate. She was dating this Nate, and it just went wild. She was not dating this Nate. She was allegedly dating another Nate. There are three Nates in the friendship circle. And she was apparently dating this other one, who I don't really want to just say out there. I know some people just say it out there, but we don't want people to go after him now. Go dig up all his social media, go dig through it. Just leave them alone. But uh, yes, she was not dating Jagger, though. He confirmed with me, I remember, that he's the ex. But not dating this one. But I do wonder if this guy was at the party. He was arrested August 20th, if I remember correctly. I still wanted to check that before I put this out. August 20th, I think it was. Was it? It was actually the day that they were like two hours late for the press conference. So that little statement I made, they arrested on August 20th. Damn it, man. I still wanted to double check my final question here. And I know there's still hundreds. But Saturday, oh, August 6th at 11 a.m. at Boca? This one. Triple A guy, roadside assistant guy. Wow, that story is confusing to me. Imagine it. If it's, I mean, Adventure of the Purpose, they said that this guy is credible. The story made sense. They only showed us 10% of what he said. And they've got more if there's certain developments. And I'm like, whoa, imagine it. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> I don't know what you think. I wonder if the light switch was in the on position. I also still also wonder about the... Is there more? Wait, I just want to see. Oh, yeah. Sorry, there's more slides. This. Did you guys watch the part? You watched it, right? On Adventure of the Purpose. I watched it again and again. I'm like, what? <laughs> wow. You say, I think... Boca is where they dumped the phone, the red stiletto. <laughs> Texas, blue bonnet, grizzly true crime, no such thing as quick, quick in true crime. <laughs> That's very true. I need to really learn that. I'm like, this will be quick, half an hour stream. Yeah, right. Sorry, mods. <laughs> Danny Bear. Ah, thank you so much. Is that Australian? Australian dollar. Thank you so much for that. I think that Kylie was in the back already and the girl he saw wasn't Kylie. If his story is true, that's what I'm also thinking, right? Sure, but that story is like, my goodness, what is going on there? And here I just put pictures of things that still remain as questions. Now I'm going to say, 
Massive speculation warning. Are we ready? <laughs> a few of you have emailed me or we've been messaging and just we've just been discussing these two vehicles, right? The cars. <laughs> I say vehicles like that. <laughs> Don't you guys in America sometimes say vehicles? Vehicles, we say. And the one thing that we might be able to snark it up about potentially is that this picture that Placer County said is the most accurate picture of Kylie's vehicle. And none of us could understand why they're showing us a picture of the vehicle in winter in the snow because she didn't even have it for more than a month. What is this? Well, there's a couple of grizzlies with a, with husbands who are in the car industry, right? And I've noticed that these two cars are not the same vehicle. Meaning this one is speculatively, I, I don't know, but a 2017 model. And this one is a 2013 model. So we're not saying that the car that they found in the water is not Kylie's car. It's Kylie's car. Kylie was in it. That's not disputed. What the snark is about is that, oh my word, even the picture they showed us was not an actual picture of her vehicle, which would be so freaking interesting. <laughs> because if you really, so go feel free, go analyze it, put them side by side. I know this is showing the right side and that's showing the left side. But for instance, the front uh, bumper area is different. The back bumper size is different. Apparently these little door handles, there's a lot of like spot the difference, the railing things on top and whatever. There's a lot of little details and I've had lots of pictures with arrows and circles and all sorts of things. And at this point, I'm just like, wow, imagine it though. Right. Um, there is still snow on the ground far into the spring in Truckee. But she only had the car for about a month. There we go. Back windows are different shape. <laughs> you see, you see what I mean. Not the same model. Okay, so you guys know. <laughs> I didn't want to sound crazy, you know, but I'm like, damn it, man. Could they not just even show a correct picture of the damn vehicle? <laughs> right? Come on, law enforcement. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> when I saw that, I'm like, oh no. People, when they go get onto this, they're gonna snark it right up. It's just like, come on, just find a 2013 model then, silver CRV. Oh that is so true. That is so true. Mary D. Plaza County is not used to having a worldwide audience. And of course, hindsight's 2020. It's just when people ask at the press conference, why are you showing us a picture of that car over there? They're like, this is the most accurate picture of her car. This is what you're looking for. And what these grizzlies that have emailed me have pointed out is just the risk of maybe someone paying attention to fine details might have missed her vehicle. Obviously, the sticker would be a little obvious if it was on there, right? But damn, just show the correct vehicle, right? And then if we... Uh, <laughs> sorry, Kathy. <laughs> Kathy says, uh, even I could find a pic of the 2013 Honda CRV online. <laughs> Law enforcement deserves a little snark, right? Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Bigfoot is as plausible as some theories I've heard. <laughs> I hear you. Now, this hoodie. Oh, my word. I still have the... Was the hoodie found anywhere? What was the relevance of the hoodie? Was it a red herring? Kylie's own mother called it a red herring. Was it a red herring? She said, don't overanalyze the lyrics too much. Okay. But who? who's the friend that gave her the hoodie? Was the hoodie ever recovered? Was it in the car? Wasn't recovered by the civilian? Wasn't in the duffel bag? We didn't see them take it. We don't know. We couldn't see it in the footage, right? We don't know. I'm just like still curious. It's just lingering curiosities. I should have called this episode lingering curiosities because that's what we're doing here. The key. The key fob, right? Is that what's called? Official key fob. Man, when they ask Adventure the Purpose, they being anyone they've been interviewed by, they've been on multiple channels, doing lots of interviews. I'm so grateful that Nick Rin was here with us. Was a key in the ignition? Can't say. Can't answer that. Then Doug likes to say, no, nope, can't answer that. It's still an open investigation. I'm like, was it or wasn't it? <laughs> you can't say, but I'm like, damn. Imagine if the phone is still missing. The key, imagine if the key is not anywhere there. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah, law enforcement gave misinformation from the jump. So even just based on the information they gave us, why do you show us a wrong model of car, 2017? What does the hoodie really have anything to do with anything? Did they ever find her jewelry? Was she wearing it? Like they said, that she wears it all the time. All of that stuff, right? Megan MC, welcome to membership. Okay, let's see what Nelly B is saying. Law enforcement can't find the car. Law enforcement get AWP away, but keep third-party tow truck. Flip the car, leave evidence, touch the car and the steering wheel with no gloves. Jeez! 
And then the pink and white hoodies in the car. Yes, that's why I'm not mentioning that hoodie. Then uh, I put Sammy there just because I'm like, oh, man, that speculation going around that she got a criminal defense attorney. The thing I worry about is the profile people are showing is not her Instagram one that's the Sammy2441 or whatever it is. It's just, it looks to me like a, you know, when they call it like a sock puppet account, like a quick account someone made and called it Sammy. I mean, when during the Gabby Petito case, do you know how many Brian Laundries I had messaging me? <laughs> I had a lot of Brian Laundries messaging me and they make the profile look just like it, right? They mimic it. And I'm like, eh, I wonder if they that wasn't a mimicked profile or if she really did get a criminal defense attorney. We just don't know. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good point, court. He later said they wouldn't be able to move the steering wheel without the ignition. The key. That's true. That's true. Okay, good point. Good point. Okay. It could be a fake account, right? All right. And then I put this tank top picture there because I know that uh, they said it wasn't Kylie's tank top. But now because of this tow truck, tow truck driver, he's a roadside assistant dude in a van. He wasn't in a tow truck. Because he said he has this whole story of the next day at Boca. Now, remember how the tank top was found between Prosser and Boca on the way. If you took the back roads from Prosser to Boca, you're going to, you would have come across this tank top. So then whose tank top was it? <laughs> That's all I want to know. That would be interesting just to know whose was it? Did you DNA test it? Did anyone pick it up? Did anyone care about this tank top? Whose was it? Because maybe then they could all say, hey, so what time were you there? And what happened? And did you see anything? You know what I mean? <laughs> yes, it's me, Amberly. This whole case is absolutely ridiculous. I agree. We, uh, and it's the last thing we wanted to be, right? These cases. Oh, my word. Wow. How sure are they that it's not Kylie's? Well, the thing is that this apparently is it's it's a tank top and not a bodysuit, but I have no idea how sure they are or not. Very interesting. <laughs> I don't think anything will make sense until years from now, if then. And some cases are like that, huh? Right? Some cases are like that. What? You meant hoodie, not tank top. No. This tank top, I'm talking about the tank top was found between uh, Prosser and Boca. Do you remember that? The video of Sammy at Boca lip syncing Lumineers. Wasn't that a Donner? Is this the recent one that came out now? Wow. Don Hagerman says, Hagerman, it seems everyone cares except for the police. I mean, it seems that way. I'm not sure it is, but we just don't know. Maybe they really just, maybe they care a lot and are working very hard behind the scenes. Of course, we don't know much. Uh, Lieutenant P Peter Pranzo is in the chat here and I've interviewed him before and I asked him once, how much does the public really know about any case, right, that the police is investigating? Is like maybe 5%. So we don't know. Imagine if we, what we know is 5%. Can you imagine it? Wow. Looks like a bodysuit. I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm still curious about that thing. Like, wow, that was literally between Prosser and Boca. Hmm? Okay, I think those are all, yep, that's that's my presentation. Hope you enjoyed that. Let me quickly check something. Oh. Somebody has sent a message. Thank you to P.T. Nodaman saying Sammy's brother is called Michael Tanner and not Colby and the age is different. Thank you. See, that helps us clear, us, clear it up. I have no idea. You know what the good thing is? Is if stuff is put out there and these are just small examples of what's put out there. That's what I'm doing today. If something put out there, it can, it's very easily then either debunked or we can explore that option, right? Of like, could it be? Because who just, who knows, right? Yeah, that's great inside thanks to Peter Pranzo, right? If this was an accident, then why did law enforcement went completely silent after finding Kylie? Well, I think now they're doing all those investigations, which takes more time than we might, might imagine, right? As they always say, this is not an episode of CSI or whatever. They literally have a lot to do, right? 
Okay. So, uh, hold on one second. I'm just thinking, what else have I got lined up here for you? <laughs> just hold on. I looked at that. Oh, yeah. I was looking at the temperature that day, August 6th, at Prosser. And it was around, hmm, hold on. So, if the roadside assistant dude saw them around 11 in the morning, then the temperature was around 80 degrees Fahrenheit and you were saying the girl's wearing a hoodie, which is already like so strange, right? <laughs> Not strange to wear a hoodie in that temperature. Hold on. 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's do it again. Let's see the temperature because I work in Celsius. 26 degrees Celsius. Wow. Right? Waffle time. Are we there at waffle time? Oh, boy. <laughs> Have we arrived <laughs> at waffle time? Let's see the latest. I'm looking at the latest quickly here uh, on Twitter. And then we can waffle it up. I also want to show you something here. Which is a milestone on Grizzly True Crime. Thank you, Grizzlies, for subscribing. Very nice. This is a live tracker. We hit a new milestone together. Thank you so much for subscribing. That's so sweet. Okay. Teenagers wear hoodies year round in the US. I mean, I don't blame them. I wear I wear hoodies here all the time too. I'm just like, damn, it sounds like it was quite hot. <laughs> okay, thank you. Brandy says, no, it's not strange for teens. I live in Florida and my kids wear, wear hoodies year round and it's freaking hot in New York. Okay, cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. I'm just making sure I don't miss any of your comments. Okay. Are we almost in waffle time? STL, thank you for that. 199 super sticker. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lieutenant Peter Pranzo. And you've been here with me from the beginning. <laughs> You're an OG, an original grizzly. Thank you. Okay, so ask me questions to get me to snark it up. Ask me something and let's see. What do you want to ask me? <laughs> I know you guys have questions. <laughs> Thank you. Just want to, sometimes it's light. Man, it just bothers me. That's better. Hiding fresh tattoos with a hoodie. Oh, my word. Eighty degrees is hot, but I wouldn't say out of the norm at night. Some people, like me, you wear them all the time. <laughs> but this case is sus. The case is sus, right? Michelle Roth, I'm a lurker today. Thank you so much, Gizla, for asking all the questions that still surround this case. Oh, my word. And I wish it was all. Those are just some. Those are my top 11 questions. I still have, like, I mean, literally, guys, I have these notes. I have friggin' these notes. These I have notes everywhere. My freaking office is overflowing with notes. And you know what? This, this will make me look like a crazy person. But when I'm just listening to things, I'm like doodling away. <laughs> I'm doodling it up because I'm just like, oh, my word. Look, just trying to make sense of all of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hold on. Mary, aren't you glad the Placer County spokesperson had great hair? Snark. She had great hair. Yes, indeed. Doodle best. <laughs> doodle. Someone want to win my doodle? <laughs> Who wants to win a doodle? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, guys. Wow. Thank you so much, J.M. Brink. Uh, true crime on 60K subs. You've earned everyone. So that concludes the serious stuff, okay? We've, we've discussed top questions that I've had. Of course, I've still got many, many questions, okay? Before we get into the waffle time and maybe some snark or salty waffles, I don't know. Remember, you can pick up your Grizzly notebooks. Um, I literally use them. I think they're the perfect size. You can put them in your bag and everything. I'm not trying to plug it. I literally use it, okay? I have a whole collection, if you didn't know, that I make myself. And I'm very proud of it. To figure out how to make a damn notebook and publish it myself was pretty cool. Because Mr. Grizzly helped me publish all my other books, okay? <laughs> he, he created the covers of my other books, by the way, in case you didn't know that. But yeah, I use this a lot. Um, <laughs> Stefan, sell your doodle for $50 going once. <laughs> Imagine it going twice. True crime doodles. <laughs> oh, my word. 
Oh, wow. This, see, this type of question, I don't know this question. I wish I was qualified to know that. This one is interesting. I don't know that Sammy has a sister, and I don't know that she came home in wet clothes or that there was even a rumor of her changing her clothes at the party. Wow, that's very interesting. They have not called this a homicide investigation. They're literally calling it an accident investigation from what I can gather. Ah, there it is. Oh, no. Do you agree with SF Investigates? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> the time has arrived for snarky time. So I don't do drama. You guys know that. I don't do drama. Okay. I don't like drama. I don't like conflict. I don't do it. I don't engage in it. I was just very hurt. Like, honestly, yesterday was the worst day of my life. It, it felt like it. it. felt I was so hurt and so shocked. This man that I've defended for so long and really, you know, interacted with for months. We talked for months. Okay. This is about the, we talked about um, other cases as well. I didn't just meet him now. And I'm just like, man, you're going to turn on me for what? Why? Why are you going to turn on me? What did I do? <laughs> so, yeah, he's, he's having a moment. And it was just upsetting. You know? So, so there's that. <laughs> and so I don't know what else to really say. But I don't think it was the right move for him coming from the Twitter world. Because the Twitter world can be pretty toxic, huh? There's a lot of conflict and stuff on Twitter. But I feel like YouTube is even more amplified. If you're going to do drama or something like that, if you're going to have a very unpopular opinion, it's just you have to do it very carefully. You can't just like go out there and whoosh, right. And you cannot sit there beside you know who and, and think you're going to be safe. <laughs> oh, no. I was so worried watching all that. I'm like, oh, no, this is going to go so badly. And here we are today. Here we are today. Um, but I, it's so unfortunate, man. Um, <laughs> you guys. Yeah. Yes, I'm very disappointed. And most of you, there's a lot of you that's going to say, I told you so. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Tell me. You know what? I'm very kind. Okay. I'm very kind. I generally give people the benefit of the doubt, even if I'm smart. Okay. I'm still like, it's okay. Just override that. Give people the benefit of the doubt. I have no beef with him. I'm not fighting with him. There's no conflict. I'm just disappointed that that there were tweets directed at me and saying that he will not associate with me because of me appearing on some channel where I was appearing on the channel because they were streaming my content. And so I thought, let me just pop on there and talk about my own damn content. Why not? Let's have a conversation. You know, I'm not petty. I'm not petty. That's the point. I don't do drama and I'm not petty. So I'm like, okay, I'll go talk on that channel. And then he literally bashed that channel and then dragged me down on top of it. And I'm like, why? What did I do? Oh, Oh, man. <laughs> like your own pet suddenly biting you? Sure, when Fury does that. I'm just saying, you know, Fury is my cat, guys. When Fury attacks me viciously while he's doing zoomies, he gets this crazy look in his eye. And sometimes he literally, <laughs> when I walk past, he attacks my leg. But sometimes it really hurts, you know. Do you know how hurt I get? <laughs> I literally storm off to my room and sulk, and I'm like, how dare my own cat attack me? <laughs> so, yes. Hmm. Oh, man. You guys don't know any of this? Okay, wait. Let me just check my messages to make sure I'm not saying too much. Stand by. Am I good? <laughs> yeah, so... so so Steve is very upset about the way that the family was notified because he was um, apparently standing with Kylie's grandpa and father and they had notified other family members and that he doesn't like that. Okay. So that's the pain he feels. He feels protective over the family and all of that, which I can actually understand. I'm like, okay, but you can't go on YouTube and bash AWP. That's not going to go well at all. Not at all. <laughs> right? Oh, thank you, Marie. 
So anyway, the point is, for anyone asking, I'm good, everything's fine, I was a little hurt, I'm okay, there's no conflict, there's no drama, everything's in peace. I just, he, he's been on some channels now and I'm like, oh no, the ultimate conspiracy theorist right now, in this case on YouTube, who's a country singer, whoa, like he's literally saying he's Sammy's dad now. <laughs> <laughs> like that's where we're at, right? That's where we're at. If you want to catch up on everything, just just go to Twitter. Go to Twitter. It's all on there. I'll just show you quickly something here. See, now this is where we're, I'm just going to say, this is where we're at, which is why you got to be careful on YouTube, man. So now he's saying that, that Stevie Sammy's dad. Oh my word. And I'm actually getting emails about it, which is even worse. <laughs> This is even worse. And anyway, I'm not in this bubble at all. So that's that. That's all I have to say on it. The law, law enforcement should have appointed a, are you, Drew Cipher? are you from, are you from America? Because when I talked to Murder Academy, Stephen Keogh, he was saying that in the UK, there's family like liaisons, right? To stay with A.W.B. to contact the family. Not ADLP or Steve's fault. It all comes back to the people paid to do their job. Very nice, Drew Cipher. So, yeah, I'm not. Um, yeah, I'm okay. I was a little hurt. We sorted it out. Everything's fine. Don't worry about me. Um, don't worry about him either. He's a big boy handling his stuff. Everything's fine. Okay. But I know a lot of you, oh my word, <laughs> my inboxes have been blowing up about this. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> okay, so any other questions that you guys have? No, luckily Melanie Deacon says, unfortunately this is probably going to be the last, um, the first and last time AWP. No, they actually are very positive. They said, no, of course not. They've got lots of agencies contacting them. They are going to work active cases as well as cold cases. That's what they've said in interviews. So I really like the attitude about it. Um, so I think it's great. So don't worry about that. I know that this case has made a lot of us, uh, a lot of people, everyone feel frustrated, angry, sad, maybe even traumatized, triggered, whatever it is, all sorts of things. You know, cases like this, oh man, it can be a lot, especially when you immerse yourself in it. I mean, I mean, we saw the civilian checker TV who who was diving out the stuff. I mean, he was very emotional about finding the stuff. You know what I mean? So if you're there and you meet the family and all that, I understand. There's a lot of emotions, a lot of things, and you know, even me covering the case. Oh man, it's a lot, right? Yes, uh, Wicked World. I will check it out after the stream. I will check out what all you've sent me. That'll be interesting. I'm going to, don't worry, Harriet, I'm going to be showing it. I'm showing the memorial, um, the celebration of life footage. I will show you because I think some of you haven't seen it. So let me show you. I'm going to put it here. I'm going to play this as uh, my outro because it's a heartfelt message from Kylie Rodney's mom from the celebration of life event. The one thing I see is that you know, like when it was the the concert, uh, the, it was called Country for Kylie, the concert they had, there just weren't that many teenagers there, which was very sad to see, to think if there were two to 300 teenagers or young adults partying it up, they're not there at the concert. They don't appear to be, there's a lot of adults as well at the celebration of life. And then of course, uh, when we look at the beach um, tribute to her, it's not what we ordinarily see, right? There's not like a huge outpouring of, I don't know, these teens aren't expressing themselves all that much, which is, that's what's weird, right? They're not really talking or putting a whole beach, I know that's on the beach though, it's like on the shoreline, but like we don't see this huge mess of like teddies and flowers and things like we saw, for instance, with Gabby Petito's case or other, many other cases. I'm just making one example. It's very sad, you know. Maybe they're all still shocked and of course everyone grieves in their own way. Um, so, yes. <laughs> Louis says, I'm trying really hard not to type anything snarky about this case, and it's really hard. Wow. 
And yes, misguided, I absolutely did see that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you so much for being here. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do join the community. This is a drama-free community. Uh, I do not discuss drama, conflict. I don't beef with other creators. Oh, hell no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not me. No, we are here with laser beam focus on missing persons cases, victims of crime, and their families. Okay? And I think I'm really amazed that um, AWP, volunteer, they volunteer divers. Damn. They went in and found Kylie and her vehicle. And then we have another civilian who found all her stuff, which is still so mind-boggling that they left that behind, but found her stuff. Um, you know, volunteers have helped out a lot in this case. So I think it's amazing. And thank you also for being part of it. I mean, I started covering this on August 8th. Not knowing the case would, you just never know. The cases will turn into this. Sometimes it's like huge. It goes so viral. You just don't know. And you're like, what did I become part of? Man, I wanted to also just finish before I show you the celebration of life video, um, which I'm going to play for you today as, as, a, as a goodbye, a final message here from Kylie's mom. I want to say, I'm not going to be covering every single little speculation and thing along the way. I'm going to cover when there's actually something to cover in the case. Um, Okay, so if you subscribe to me, just know that's my style. That's what I do. I care so much about so many missing persons. It's actually overwhelming how many missing people there are and worldwide. So, you know, um, I'm going to be covering lots of other cases. Today, the Wagner trial started, the Pike County Massacre, a family of four who conspired to kill a family of eight and did so. Wow. And then there's four of them in prison or in jail now, going there in, at the trial, and then two of them are going to testify against the other two. Whoa, it's like two are going to face possibly the death penalty. The other two have life imprisonment, as, as I mean, the mom and the one brother. It's crazy. So look at my episode called the Pike County Massacre, if you haven't heard of that. There's lots of trials coming up. There's lots of things happening in the true crime world. And I hope that I can use this platform. Thank you for subscribing. The more people that subscribe and this community grows, hopefully the more impact we can have. Um, Thank you to J.M. Brink, a glass of your favorite wine to offset any badness toward you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's very sweet. I really appreciate all of you. And now I'm going to play this as my outro. So if you see me, please don't feel like, oh, no, why is she not talking about this case? That's what I subscribe for. I understand, but I don't do drama. And I don't speculate too far. And I really look forward to covering lots more cases with you and using this platform as responsibly as I possibly can. All right. <laughs> you sound like a Texan with you. Oh, hell no. <laughs> okay, here we go. So let's add this one here. I'm going to make it full screen. And all right, I will see you guys uh, later. We are so grateful to have the opportunity to join together today with our friends, family, and community in Kylie's name. Though we gather together, grief and healing is such a personal and individual thing. Today we will honor Kylie in honoring each other and holding each other up as we grieve in our own ways. We'll laugh, dance, share stories, songs, and poetry, or maybe we'll cry in a corner <laughs> or at the podium. It's all okay. We'll remember and we'll create new memories as we all learn how to move forward in a world where we miss her we are so blessed to be able to miss her together and to walk together into tomorrow. The way that she has brought everyone together, even in death, is a legacy that I will cherish forever. I'm hearing stories about people wanting to be nicer to each other in her memory. Kylie's dear friend recently told her mom that before all of this happened, she thought the word community had no real meaning, that it didn't really exist. But after Kylie went missing, the way our community showed up in full force showed her that it in fact is so very real and so, so powerful. That kind of impact on our teens gives me hope. The demonstration of strength and togetherness and the way that they have an army of supporters standing behind them will carry them far as they enter adulthood. 
We would like to thank everyone who has come together to support us in what we hope will be the most difficult time of our lives. There's no way that we'll be able to ever return the kindness, generosity, and compassion that has been extended to us over the last month, but we will live the rest of our lives trying, and in that trying, Kylie will be with us, reminding us to be kind, laugh, and sing, and that sometimes it's even okay to cry. In closing, I want to thank our media friends for respecting our request to give us privacy while we celebrate my daughter today. Unfortunately, the social media frenzy has become such a monster that our teens are suffering and we want to create a safe space for them to heal together without fear of something being taken out of context. To anyone who gains pleasure or satisfaction from commenting online, I ask you to take a moment to look inward and to try to recognize your motive. Remember the three gates that all words should flow through. Is it kind? Is it true? Is it helpful? I implore you to remember that there is honor in silence and there is kindness in minding your own business. You are talking about the death of my child. Our community's child. It's time to let our children mourn their friend quietly, peacefully. I hope you can find other more beautiful and helpful ways to spend your time and remember Kylie. Call your mom, take a walk, pick up a new hobby. Please know we got this. Let her rest. The community of Truckee came together today to celebrate